Okay guys, I've had some requests for making the uh, element for this soldering gun, or soldering iron. <coughs> I've made another video of it uh, just telling you that it could be done. But uh, I wanted to show you the ones that are curious about how I did it. Um, this tip I've had these for many years, but uh, it's a quarter by 20 thread. And what I did was I took a, <coughs> a stainless steel tube off of a Frymaster Fryer probe, and I just cut it off right here. So that left the stainless steel tube with an end on it. So all I did was press fitted that inside of the soldering soldering iron uh, case and then I swedged it around inside with a countersunk screw I just pounded it down a little bit to where it uh, formed to the contour of the inside of the case so from that point <coughs> then I had a housing that I could use to put a new element inside of it what I did here for the threads, in other words, this this tube didn't have any threads on it. So what I did was I took a piece of a uh, rod, uh, malleable, just regular steel rod, and I threaded it, and then I drilled the inside of it, <coughs> and then I, it actually just made it where it press fit on onto the tube itself. I didn't solder it or braze it or anything. I just press fitted it onto the tube and it doesn't turn or anything so I can screw the tip on change tips and never have to worry about the element again so from that point <coughs> that's how I did the housing and of course I told you in the last video that I drilled the spot welds and pulled the the probe or the tip off of here the electronic or not electronic but where the connections are made I pulled all that apart and there's two solder joints inside for the wires that come from the element and I just unsoldered that took it apart pulled the element completely out the old one um, and then I put the new stainless steel tube in of course longer and from that <coughs> then I made the element now here's where it gets tricky um, because I didn't want to use a new nichrome wire that I that I do have and here's where you can buy it um, it's like uh, three feet of number 31 insulated nichrome wire and it's ultimachine.com and it's like twelve dollars maybe I, I forget exactly but um, this is what I use to make the elements on my 3D printer for the bed of it. <coughs> so I had all this stuff already. Um, for the tubing, you can use, uh, you can go to a hobby store maybe and find stainless steel tubing. Uh, the exact diameter that you need, of course, it's not going to have the end on it, but you can just bend it over, swedge it over, whatever. And then, uh, go that route <clears throat> but what I've done here this is nichrome wire that I've taken apart out of an old element and it's the same uh, diameter number 31 anyway uh, the insulation was all burnt up on it so I just pulled the insulation off and I used uh, what they call Kapton tape and it comes in a roll like this and I'll put it on the uh, show me more on the video down at the bottom and uh, a link to where you can buy this Kapton, to, or Kapton tape <coughs> so I just wrapped it with Kapton tape because it was bare wire and I, I haven't tried this but I think it would work but um, my recommendation is to go ahead and buy the nichrome wire insulated already 
that way you don't have to worry about insulating the wire. Um, another thing I did was to connect the ends, both ends of the cap or the nichrome wire. You have to connect it to uh, what they call a PDFE wire, and it's uh, the insulation is real high heat, and it's a real smooth insulation. And you can tell the difference between re regular insulation wire and uh, PTFE. And I've done work for many years for uh, different companies, but uh, I just accumulated a lot of parts through the years. I guess uh, some people have called me a pack rat, but it's come in handy because I've saved a lot of the things that I've taken apart and replaced uh, parts that were bad. So this probe here already had the PTFE wire and so I saved all the wire out of all the probes I had ever changed <clears throat> and these probes also uh, have platinum wire inside of them so there's a plus there and then the stainless steel tube but I used the uh, PTFE wire which came in handy for this repair here for this uh, soldering iron. What I did, uh, you can also buy these little uh, connectors, the crimp on connectors from Ulti Machine. You can buy them a hundred at a time which is very inexpensive as well. Ultimachine.com and what I did was I just cut cut it right here to where it got rid of the slide on part that slides onto a pin and I just kept the crimped part and then I use these pliers here uh, to crimp the nichrome wire to the PTFE wire and it worked out really well so you don't have to solder these wires together and it wouldn't work in a soldering iron anyway they would just come apart so you have to have some way to crimp the two wires together so I did one end and then I made a brass uh, you can buy you can buy um, probably number six screw brass screw that uh, has a real coarse thread on it uh, the coarsest thread you can find really and it might not be number six it might have to go metric but you, you have to have something <coughs> once the wires rolled onto this you have to have something that'll slide into the to the uh, stainless steel tubing here's a um, allen screw that's about the right size but I think it's a little large once you wind the wire around this and try to slide it in it won't go in so you need to find something that's small enough that you can wind the wire around and still go in the hole through this uh, stainless steel tube so once you do that, <coughs> and just for simplicity, I, I have a quarter inch by 20 thread um, screw that I drilled a hole in. Now you don't have to drill a hole in it, you can just groove it with a little Dremel tool or something that you can find from Harbor Freight. Uh, it's similar to a Dremel tool, but it comes with discs that you can cut, like right here. You can just cut a groove all the way through past center and then that will serve to put you can just lay your wire in there like so and just imagine that there's a groove in there and you just lay it in and then you start winding your wire around it well this one I've drilled a hole in and you might be able to do that on the other one too but it might be too small but you put it in from one side of course and then you pull it all the way through like this and then leave this uh, the crimp exposed just a little bit and then notice I've got the threads cut right here to where you can start winding it right here and it's a, a curvature around this thread so you can start winding it and it just follows through each thread you just keep going until you run to the end of the wire 
and it, it gives a perfect um, bed layer for the wire to lay in. And once you do that, then you can you can crimp another wire onto this side. And you might want to do it before, but if you drill a hole in it, you won't be able to uh, slide it through. So basically, that's all I did. So now I have an element made to where both wires attach to it. Then you can slide it in your housing. Slide it up in there. Of course, this one's too large to go in there, but uh, just for illustration, that's what I did. So once this is in there and tight, then you have your two wires coming out, and then they're going to stick out this way, and then you just cut them off to the length that you need with this uh, connection pushed up in there. And then you know you can pull it all out again. Then you can solder your two connections. Um, of course, you want there's insulation inside here. It looks similar to this. Go ahead and put it over it before you solder your wires. And also use uh, heat shrink on each connection before you um, put it all back together and before you solder it. Put heat shrink on each connection, solder it, and then this slide down over it. And then you can put it all back together and just press fit it together. And then that's about it, really. Um, it's self explanatory when you take this thing apart. There are pieces inside of here you need to keep and reuse uh, plastic insulators, um, of course, the connection part, and all that. And then even the uh, outside uh, rubber here. Now, this one. I made the whole housing on the lathe um, and I threaded the housing itself. This is stainless steel t uh, but it was a solid piece and then I drilled it all the way through to about right here to where the element would slide up almost to the end and of course it heats up but it heats up slower because it's thicker. Um, that's why I went ahead and on the second one that I made I use stainless steel tubing because the tubing is really thin and it has to heat up really just this part here to go into the tip. And this one this one works better, it heats up faster. So this is really I think the way to go. Um, of course you're going to spend a little money on startup of getting the nichrome wire and the connectors. Um, and if you have stainless steel tubing or not, you might have to buy the stainless steel tubing. So all of these things together, you need to weigh the price, whether it's going to be worth uh, making the element and making all of the parts or going ahead and just buying another tip. So it's up to you on that. But uh, this is what I did. This is the way it worked for me. and. Uh, this tip I've used probably for about six different electronic boards that I've built already and it, it's, it has last outlasted the, the tips that you can buy. So I'm really happy with this tip. It works really well. Um, I, I can't say enough about it as far as how good it works. The Kapton tu uh, tape um, so that's that's really about it. Um, if you have any questions or anything else, uh, just uh, post them on YouTube on my uh, video, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.